if you are a single soldier in the United States Army, you're gonna be living in the barracks and you might be curious as to what is that living like? What is actually inside of the barracks? What is, you know, the rooms like? What are amenities are inside the barracks and all of that kind of stuff. And it does vary on installation to installation, unit to unit. But let's sit down and let's kind of break some of that down so that we have a better understanding as to what to expect from living in the barracks. Let's go. Now I might have some clips in here to kind of show you some examples of things that I found on YouTube. And if I do have something for you to see, I'll probably have a link down in the description box down below that links to that person's barracks room tour that they put on YouTube. And some of these people are still active with making content. Some of them don't seem to be, but nonetheless, check out their tour video if you'd like to see like some full videos that I've kind of like maybe clipped inside this video. So for US Army soldiers on active duty, if you are single, then you're gonna be living in the barracks. And you might be curious as to what is that life going to be like? What can I expect from these barracks? So they'll usually have a building somewhere on base. Sometimes it's near your work, but sometimes it's not. There are some cases where your barracks is over here and then maybe five miles down the road or whatever, that's where you actually work out of the motor pool, out of an office or something like that. But most cases, they do usually have the barracks nearby, but it's not always the case. So if you do run into the situation where where you're gonna be working is not within walking distance of the barracks, then yeah, you might maybe you need a car, maybe you need a bicycle, maybe you need to catch a ride from somebody, but sometimes it'll just depend on your location. There is of course a parking lot, usually a pretty big parking lot to be able to facilitate all the soldiers to be able to have somewhere to park if they have their own car, maybe somewhere to even lock up a bicycle. If you wanna lock up a bicycle out front, you can probably even bring it into your room if you really want to, but there is multiple options for you to be able to have somewhere to park. It's usually not covered. There are a few places I have seen covered parking, but commonly it's not a covered parking, it's just an open parking lot. Typically these buildings have multiple floors, right? You probably have, you know, three, four, five stories, whatever, depending on, you know, how new, how old the barracks are, the location of the barracks and everything. Now, I, I definitely say a lot of things depend on the location because it does. There is no set standard for how army barracks are. It's not gonna be the exact same everywhere you go. There are gonna be a lot of variations, but I wanna try to provide you with some common examples at least. Now with this building, you have an entrance and usually there's a main entrance. There's probably even some other entrances, but there's usually only one main entrance. And when you go through that main entrance is usually somewhere in that vicinity, there's usually what is called the CQ desk. The CQ desk is typically manned 24 hours, seven days a week type of thing by soldiers that rotate through shifts. You usually have an NCO and maybe one soldier, an NCO and two soldiers. Depending on the unit, how they'll kind of do it, there's usually somebody at the desk for the most part to have somebody there, that way in case of emergencies and a lot of other precautions, they have someone on shift that's awake 24 seven. So they rotate through shifts, but with that CQ desk, that's also checking like visitors and checking out, you know, making sure soldiers are doing the right thing. And if someone are getting, someone's getting into a fight in the barracks or the building catches on fire, then they have someone to kind of respond to emergencies. Typically on the first floor is where you might find what is called a day room. And the day room is kind of like an activity room. Not all barracks have this, but there are a lot of common ones that still do use this kind of idea. They did it back in the day, they still kind of carry it on. And a lot of them do have it, but not every single one will have what's called a day room. And inside that day room is usually like a hangout area, maybe have some couches, maybe a big screen TV in there, possibly like a foosball table, maybe a pool table, maybe other things. Sometimes I've heard of some that have like video game consoles and you can like rent out the games kind of for free, you know, from the CQ desk. You just check them out and sign them out. And then once you're done playing the game, you gotta make sure to return it. Otherwise you're gonna be held responsible for anything you don't return. That's pretty common, like sometimes like the, the, the pool cues or the balls for playing pool, sometimes you have to get that from the CQ desk and then you sign for it. And then that way if something happens, they get broken or missing, you're responsible for that. So that day room is like a little activity room that can be utilized by those soldiers living in the barracks. Now also typically on that first floor, there might be a laundry room. There might also be a laundry room on every floor, but at a minimum, there should probably at least be that one laundry room on the first floor. Now the laundry room isn't something you have to pay for. You don't have to put quarters or tokens or anything inside the wash machines and dryers. It's free to use for the soldiers that are living in the barracks. So you can do your laundry, wash them, dry them. You have to probably use your own laundry soap. They might have a vending machine for you to buy laundry soap sometimes in the laundry room, but for the most part, they don't provide that stuff to you. You're typically supposed to like stay with the laundry with your, your clothes, that way they can't get stolen or whatever. You usually have signs saying you gotta stay with it. And if they find clothing unattended, then they're gonna you know, collect it or put it in a bin or do something with it. But for the most part, a lot of people don't do that, but a lot of times you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to stay with the laundry. There might also be like a mail room or maybe some like, kind of like post office box type of mailboxes that soldiers maybe have keys to or something like that. But there are also some times where that mail room is located in a separate building somewheres, but 
you may have it either one. I think more commonly nowadays, they have usually the mailboxes within the first floor of the barracks or something like that. And then if you receive a package, then it might go to like the mail room, which might still be inside the barracks or it might be inside of like the main headquarters area for like your company or something along those lines where if you have a package, you have to go pick it up from there. They don't deliver those packages to your room. They're probably gonna get delivered to like that mail room. And then also on the first floor, there's probably some barracks rooms, right? We're gonna talk about the barracks rooms here in a second, but you have also on the first floor, possibly some barracks rooms. And then the other floors are probably nothing but barracks rooms. To get to those other floors, you're gonna have definitely stairs. Stairs is a for sure thing you're gonna have, but some of the more modern barracks, even from like, you know, 2010 on or whatever, probably have an elevator, not always, but some barracks usually have an elevator. But if they are more older style barracks that maybe have been renovated, they may not, may not have added like a, an elevator to it. They just may have like cleaned up the rooms, made them a little bit more modernized, but didn't add an elevator to it. So you'll have at least stairs, but maybe even an elevator. Now with the multiple floors, you might have it where there's like different wings or different sections of each floor type of thing. And commonly they'll have it like broken down by platoons or something like that, or by companies or something, depending on how large these barracks are. You might have it to where first floor is all of, you know, Alpha Company, second floor is all Bravo Company or however they kind of have it organized. And usually they do kind of segregate like men and women too. So you might have it like down this hallway is all men and down this hallway is all females. That probably just depends on the unit itself as well. Some units are kind of going away from that and maybe you have it to where, you know, you have uh, men in this room and then next door is some females or something. And it, it just really depends on the unit, but commonly they might separate it in some way. Now, of course, we gotta talk about the rooms in the barracks. And to get into those rooms, the most common newer kind of barracks and everything usually use like a key card, kind of like you'd use in a hotel to either swipe it, to put it inside of a slot or put it up next to a reader. And that gains you access to the room. But some of the older barracks may still have keys, but typically they've tried to go away from the keys because soldiers lose the keys where if they lose a, a key card, they can just rekey the card and deactivate the old one where if they lose a lock, then they probably have to have someone come in and replace that, that doorknob with the lock system and everything like that. So a lot of the barracks usually have key cards nowadays. Now, when you open up the door, it may vary based on location, older style barracks compared to newer style barracks, but you might have like a common area and then maybe two doors that one's your door and one's your roommate's door, or maybe a common area and then open area and everything is yours. There is no roommate kind of situation. It really just depends on the, the, the barracks if they're newer or older style. So let's start off with talking about that common area. If you have one, what might be inside of it if it's something that you have to yourself or something you have to maybe share with a roommate. In that area, you might have like a kitchen area. It might be a dedicated like kitchen area or may just be like a corner of that room. But typically nowadays they have full size fridges, not like it was back in the day with just the small little mini fridges. Now they're usually full size fridges with a freezer up top and a full size fridge. Along with it, you probably have a like microwave is pretty common. And then in some barracks, they nowadays actually have a built in like stove type of thing. It's just like a, a hot surface electric one that you can cook on. That's probably pretty surprising to a lot of veterans, old school veterans, especially because there used to be a time when you couldn't have hot plates, you couldn't cook inside a barracks room. So everything you had to make, you had to probably just use the microwave. That's not really the case anymore. Now, not all barracks have these cooktops. There are a lot of the newer ones that do have the cooktops, but those that do not have cooktops, a lot of units are actually allowing soldiers to have things like an air fryer or a, a some kind of cooktop type of thing that they can plug into the wall. And there might still be units that are pretty strict on that and won't let you have that, but I'm seeing a lot of units that will allow that nowadays. So I know, surprising my veterans, but we gotta move on, you know, and, and adjust to allow these soldiers to have a little bit more responsibility and trust that hopefully they're not gonna burn the barracks down because it's also essential to allow them to build some cooking skills. Me never having anything to cook with inside the barracks made it to where I really didn't learn how to cook for myself. But as far as appliance goes, the refrigerator, the microwave, maybe a cooktop, that's about all the appliances you usually get. You can buy your own, you wanna buy a toaster, you wanna buy some other things or whatever, you can do so, but that's usually the only things are usually included with the room. Now in that kitchen area, it probably has a sink, but if it's an older style barracks, you might have to utilize a sink that maybe is attached to the bathroom or inside the bathroom because it might not have a dedicated countertop with like cupboards and everything. If it's more of a newer style barracks and it probably has that where it has a sink and some cupboard space, but if it's just an older style barracks that they've kind of renovated, then it might not have a kitchen sink and you have to utilize the sink from the bathroom. But with the bathroom, let's talk about that. It might have it to where the sink for the bathroom is inside the bathroom itself, or it might be just outside of the bathroom. 
Typically the ones that have the sink on the outside of the bathroom, usually those ones that have the two separate doors. That way, if you wanna brush your teeth or shave or whatever, while your roommate's taking a shower, you can still do so. Where if the sink is inside the bathroom, then you have to wait for your roommate to get down inside the bathroom, showering, go to the bathroom, whatever, before you can utilize those sinks. So commonly when the sink is outside the bathroom, it's usually because you're sharing a room with someone else. But if it's just yours to yourself, then the sink might be inside the bathroom. The toilets sometimes are more like your like fast food rest stop kind of toilets where it doesn't have a seat cover. It's just like a, a toilet with a, some kind of piping coming up and then a handle to flush like you would see inside of like a fast food uh, bathroom type of thing. Not usually like the toilets that you have inside of like your home at, at back home or like in a hotel type of thing. But sometimes they do have toilets like that. But a lot of them are like those rest stop kind of style toilets. But nonetheless, you have the toilet inside of there and then pretty common that you'll have like a shower tub type of combo. The tub isn't anything huge. It's not like a big tub that you can have jets coming out of it or whatever. It's kind of like your typical tub shower combo like you would see in a hotel. Now there's the room area itself and the size of it can vary again based on the barracks and location, all sorts of things. But it could be as small as just a little 10 by 10 room or maybe a 20 by 20 room. It really could be somewhere between there, whatever. It's really going to depend on the location. I've seen some barracks that are pretty small and some that are fairly decent size. The barracks room will include some furniture, not everything that maybe you possibly want, but it does have a lot of furniture that comes with the room that you're assigned for, that you're responsible for. So if you damage it, then you're probably going to get charged for it. The furniture that usually is included is a bed, but not a very big one. Typically, it's gonna be a twin size bed. There are some few locations I have seen where maybe they do a full size bed, but for the most part, your average bed that you're gonna probably have inside the barracks is probably gonna be like a twin size bed. Linen, sometimes they have it included. It's usually nothing very fancy, so it's usually best for you to get your own linen because it's probably gonna be really crappy linen that they do provide to you. Other furniture you might have inside of there is you're gonna most likely have a desk with probably a chair of some sort. So you have a place to put your laptop or a computer that you wanna set up there or just have an area to kind of work at. It's also pretty common to have some sort of like a dresser. Maybe it's just a standard dresser that's about like waist high and you probably put a TV on top of it if you want to. Or it's like a locker style one where it opens up and maybe there's a cabinet area where you can put a TV inside of that and then some drawers to put some of your clothing or other items you wanna place inside there. And those are really common. There are some locations that might have like a small table for you to eat at, maybe an end table, but your very common items that you're probably most likely to have is that bed, the desk, and probably some kind of like a cupboard type of thing for putting clothes inside of or putting a TV on top of or something. Other items may just be extra based on how those barracks are kind of set up and what they provided to soldiers in those barracks rooms. So outside of that, if you want additional things, you want to buy a futon, you want to, you know, buy a TV, then that's on you. That's going to be up to you to be able to get those types of things. And then of course, there's typically a closet. Usually the closet is usually pretty big because they understand you got a lot of army gear and equipment you have to take care of. And then you have your civilian clothing and everything for on your free time to, you know, get changed out of uniform to, to do things off base, on base, whatever you want to do. So they usually provide you with a pretty large closet, usually like a large walk-in closet. That's a good size that you can easily fit all of your army gear inside of, plus lots of space for your uniforms and your civilian clothing. Now within the barracks, sometimes they have like some free cable type of thing in some barracks, but for the most part, usually you have to get that yourself. Uh, if you want internet, you have to get that yourself as well. There's not usually free internet. That's usually a service you have to pay for to be able to get the Wi-Fi. There's not like a, a set Wi-Fi for the whole entire barracks that's free. You might be able to mooch off of somebody if they don't secure their Wi-Fi or they give you the password, but for the most part, you're gonna have to pay for your own Wi-Fi, your own internet in the barracks to be able to have those kind of special amenities. You don't have to pay for any utilities, so if you really wanted to leave the lights on all the time, you probably could. Nobody's gonna probably really notice probably, but you don't have to pay for any utilities. So if you're you know, running the heater, running the AC, running the lights all the time, you got all sorts of LED lights going inside the room, or whatever, you, you're probably just fine. So sometimes the barracks are awesome, sometimes they suck. I've actually seen one variant of barracks, I don't remember where it was at, but they had like a kitchen area, they had a living room area, and then their bedroom with I think a full size bed inside there, maybe a queen size bed. So that was pretty awesome, but that seems pretty rare. I've only seen that once and I have no idea who the hell was lucky enough to get those. Also, usually if you're a non-commissioned officer, you won't have a roommate. You might have a barracks that are set up that do have roommates and they usually have separate keys for those rooms. You might have a common area to share and then your room has a key and then that roommate has their own key to access their room that way you can keep your stuff secure. Or like I said, it might be just a big open room that's just all to yourself and you're the only one that has the key to get into that room. 
but in situations where they might have two room kind of setups in those barracks, NCOs might have like a more of a larger one room type of setup, depending on how their barracks are set up. But typically NCOs do not usually share a room with someone else. Also, you're not gonna have it if you're a male soldier, you're not gonna have a female soldier for your roommate and vice versa. They usually make sure to keep that separated. But sometimes the barracks does suck and sometimes you wanna move out of the barracks and technically you can't do that. Typically you have to still maintain that room and that means, you know, if there's barracks inspections, then you have to still be present for the barracks inspections. You still have to make sure it's staying clean and everything like that. And then if they're doing some kind of, you know, cleanup inside the barracks, you usually still have to participate. But when you're pretty early into the army, you're a young soldier, you probably can't afford to go pay rent off post because you're not gonna get BAH. You only get BAH if you're authorized for it, typically if you're married or other certain circumstances where you'll be authorized BAH. Otherwise, if you're living in the barracks and you just don't wanna live in the barracks, you're gonna have to pay for that out of your pocket and E1, E2 pay, even E3 pay, probably isn't gonna be enough to be able to do whatever bills you might possibly have, like cell phone or whatever, and pay for rent and utilities and everything else that would come about. So it's usually best for you just to live for free in the barracks and then maybe when you get higher up in rank then move out when you can afford it or wait until you get to the rank where you actually will get kicked out of the barracks and can receive BAH even if you're still single. So that might be what you can expect from living in the barracks, but there are also a lot of like restrictions, things you can and can't do living in the barracks. And rather than diving into that in this video, you can simply just check out this video that I already did. So check it out to learn about things you can and cannot do in the army barracks. Check out links down in the description box down below for social media. Hit that thumbs up. I'm Christopher Chaos. I'll see you next time. See ya.